offensive zone is obviously another zone, and this is the one everyone likes to play in. And when you have the puck, you get to make plays. And it's exciting in the offensive zone. That's where we want to be. Um, so in the offensive zone, there's little things that you can learn. I could need my glasses. I wrote a few things. <laughs> um, so this is where especially people want to get, get the puck. So what you want to do in the O zone is you want to make sure that you're doing little things. So here's some of the thoughts that I had. Net drives, are you driving to the net properly? Are you going to the far post or the short or the to the to the um, uh, near post, right? Is your stick on the ice? Uh, are you go- the honey hole? So, what I mean by the honey hole is if let's say the puck's in the corner, are you standing in the 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 slot? Like because when I was a kid, I was always getting the slot short. You you, you score from the slot. Well, the slot. If you stand in the middle of the ice, in between the hash marks, waiting for a puck. You could probably wait there for about 27 years and never yeah. get a pass because that's where all the traffic is. Yeah, so you have prime to learn. Time ice right. right. Yeah. So as much as you think that you're open, guys can't even see you. And if they can, it's hard to get that puck through. So it's learning how to shift, find a hole in the, what I would call the honey hole, which would be the high, high slot on the strong side, I mean the same side as the puck. So that you're an option where you have to pull a defense out, mm-hmm. or and if and if they go there, it's just moving to the open spaces. It might be having the intelligence or to understanding that there's a cycle going on, and to get behind the net using the behind the net as a pass option, where it's probably the best place to uh, to make plays, right? Because it, it's hard to defend behind the net. Yeah. Um, it's your net play. Here's a, here's a one. Jones and I were talking about the other day was you know how people you know you have a net front presence. Right, so you're you know you're screening goalies. So well, actually, here's one right there. So if you, are you screening a goalie or are you just in front of the net? Is your stick is in the right position to make a shot pass or to 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 uh, like to be a tripod so that if the puck comes, you can actually tip them? Um, are you underneath the defenseman? Which is another one because a lot of the times, if you're getting boxed out by a defenseman, if if there's a loose puck that goes just south of the of the goal line. He's there first, so you can learn the art of when the puck is getting shot or plays are being made, being able to slip behind a defenseman so that if it comes a, a rim or goes behind the net, you're you're one step away instead of five for a battle. So that the art of doing that, you get to lose pucks a lot quicker as well. Yep. So that's that's a really simple thing. Uh, learning how to manage the puck even though you don't have it. So that's what I was saying about slipping in the holes, getting in the high honey hole, getting behind the net. Um Staying above the puck so that you're defensively sound. So people have heard that term a lot, yeah. staying above the puck. It's just simply staying above the puck means that if there's a loose puck, so if you're uh, F3, like a high forward, um, when the puck, go, whatever side it goes on, you're above them. So you're cutting off ice, not back checking and making your job harder. So it's mm-hmm. just taking angles now. Again, forward checking is about stopping and starting. And, uh, and then, of course, when you have to move, move in a hurry. So for an example... It's interesting to see kids like when we do our battle drills or just even drills in general and games in general, the difference between that. This is where the hard work actually pays off when you're doing things right. So let's just say you're a, a F3 and the puck is in the left corner and it, and, and, and it shifts over to the right and you, or even a pass, whatever. It goes to the right. You have an option to get there slowly, take your time, or you have an option to sprint. And when you learn how the, the art of actually sprinting, even though you don't have the puck to get in, um, to get in passing options, you'll notice that the puck gets to you a lot more often oh, because yeah. you've outworked people. Yeah. So that's the art of hard work while you don't have the puck with in an efficient manner. Yep. So um, it's, gotta... it's getting, it, you know, are you reading plays? Like are you, if you're coming in on two on ones, three on twos, are you running your routes properly? Are you getting to the net like really quickly or do you, can you read it where, oh, I, I might have to pull out a little bit higher to be a pass option, right. not, just, not just being a robot when you play. Yeah. So do you have anything? Oh with that? yeah, I got a bunch here. Okay, <laughs> okay so yeah. uh, I'll just run through kind of in order of what when when they came up. So uh, first one, just again, this is just generally because you said a lot of things there, but a lot of when you don't have the puck, like I said in the D zone, it's like you have to be willing to do some of these things. Yes. So when you're in the offensive zone, the way you'd frame that is you need to be you kind of need to be willing to be the guy that doesn't score, and that will end up getting you more goals. Yep afterwards so yeah. the the reason that i thought of that was when you're talking about net drives and this is something I, I remember in practice and when we see like young kids in practice everyone wants to be the guy coming in late if you're doing like a three on two oh, yeah. drill or oh whatever, yeah right everyone wants to be the guy that comes in late yeah get the shot yeah you get the shot right you get a nice 
good area shot. And that's what everyone, the hope is for everyone. And then what tr- that translates into a game is nobody drives the net. Yeah. So when you guys cross into the offensive zone, the guy who has the puck out wide, the two guys that don't have the puck, both of them float. Yeah. Right. And, but it's so important that you have someone go to the net to pull that D down because that is what opens up yeah. that stuff in the slot. And then what happens is you get, you might get a good opportunity, but then you're right in front of the net and that's where you get all the garbage. Yeah. So if, if you're a guy that isn't uh you know, a skill guy necessarily, you can get a bunch of just garbage goals just because you were there when there was a big mess and the puck was just there and you could whack at it. You yeah, know? And having said that is, and I can't believe I didn't say this earlier, is that stopping at the net. Oh yeah. It's the stops and starts again. Yeah. But when you do a net driver, you go to the net, it's stop, not figure skating. Because once you figure skate, you're lost again. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that ties into that, that willingness to, okay, I'm, I'm going to let this guy that's behind me be the high guy to get the shot because I know we need to have someone to drive the net. Yeah. So I'm going to drive there. I'm going to stop and park it right there and just wait. Yeah. And then off the rush, you're there. The play happens quick. You might get a shot. You might not. But if you get a shot, and a lot of times on odd man rushes, the puck will be directed at the net in some capacity. Yeah. And then you're just there. Yeah. And now you're there. And so yeah. when all the shit comes into the slot, now you can whack away and, yeah. and battle battle in front, which is a great yeah. thing. So, And if you're somebody that, that doesn't do that, then those three on twos turn into blown up plays. You don't get an opportunity. And those are potential goals you could have scored or opportunities you could have had that now you didn't have because yeah. you weren't willing to go to the net. Yeah. You know, so that's, that was the first thing that came up while you were talking. Yeah. Then uh, the second thing you started talking about the honey hole. Yeah. And uh, I remember my coaches, a couple of my coaches, they used to call it like find the soft dice yeah. instead of the honey hole. Yeah. And it was more than just, uh, it was more than just that strong side high yeah. point, but it was like, it was things like, get in behind the D it meant yeah. all that stuff. Like find yeah. the open area to, yeah. to, to make yourself available was kind of the idea, yeah. but from a per, like a uh, purely offensive standpoint, like getting the shots, the reason that that spot is so effective when you can find that l- little bit of an outside lane is because now you put the D in a tough spot, right? Because now the D has to decide, okay, I see that guy there, but he's too far for me to go get. Yeah. Cause I can't leave the front of the net. So if he comes to you, now you just opened up the lanes for somebody to drive for the net from else. low. And if you if he doesn't come to you, now you're in a spot where you can get... Because the winger has to worry about his D. And yep. the D that's locked in front of the net has to stay in front of the net. Yep. Right? So now you're in a really... You're putting everyone in a tough spot. And that's why that's a really effective position to put yourself in. Yep. And that's why all those really good shooters that you see in the NHL, they score from... It's not the slot. That's yep. not, it's not the slot. They do score from the slot. But more times than not, if they're getting a shot from like when they are just seem like they parked it and just waited. Yeah. They're floating in that area. Yeah. In that area that's just outside of the D's reach. And then they've really learned how to get the puck and get it off quick from that spot. Because, you know, as soon as you get, this is another good skill is being able to get the puck off quick. Obviously that's when you have the puck, but guys can, will get to that ice, but then they can't get it off quick. Yeah. Cause as soon as you, it gets to you, you know, everyone's coming. Like they're coming out hard. Yeah. Well, you got, you yeah. got less than a 10th of a second. Yeah. To make you're a in a point. dangerous position, yeah. right? So they can't go until you have the puck. The D yeah. can't leave to come and get you till you have it. But as soon as you have it, they're coming. Yeah. So those guys in the NHL that are really good in that area, they can get it and shoot it so quick. And that yeah. they get a, a bunch of goals that way. Yeah. Without the puck, it's just driving those holes really quickly. When you, if you make a pass, it's driving in those holes really quickly for give and goes. Yeah. And then it could be just even faking without the puck. You know, you're looking around and, you know, if someone's eyes are on you and stuff. It's just acting as if you're, oh, there's an open spot here, you know, just creating deception without the puck. Right. And this ties into the one you were just saying before, too, about getting that movement in the offensive zone. So if it's one thing to like find those spots and whatever, but if you're standing still, then you kind of you can eliminate yourself from getting into being a good option for anything, right? So just yeah. having that movement in the offensive zone, jumping into holes and being making yourself available, even if you don't end up getting it, you're just forcing their guys to have to look around. Whereas if you just stay in one spot, they know you're there, that their job's easy. Now they can pay attention to the puck and they know you're here and there's no problem. Yeah. But if you're spinning around, you're going behind the net, back in front of the net, trying to find that soft ice in the honey hole, all that kind of stuff. Now you're making their job a lot more difficult. Uh, last thing I was going to say, you talked about F3. So I, I want to go into that a little bit more, like, um, because everyone, like coaches talk a lot about like F3 being a more like def- defensive position yeah. when you're in the offensive zone. Mm-hmm. So I want you to talk about like a little bit more like the role of F3 or how you should think about it if you are F3 in the offensive zone. Yeah. Like, so F3 is that you're obviously a goal scoring threat. 
and you want to jump into those holes and to to give it another element everybody should be doing this but f3 especially is have that stick ready to shoot at all times like having it up here you never know when a pass is coming so stick on the ice so if you have your stick on the ice you can get a shot off at any point uh like for, for at any point so you got to be willing to do that but f3 basically um you're staying above the puck so it's just a, a heck of a lot easier like if a loose puck comes out it's a heck of a lot easier to take an angle and keep the puck in than to back check it and that's basically the principle of f3 is 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 you're, you're still putting pressure but you're more of a defensive minded that's that's really simply yep. what that means yep good does that answer your question yeah, for sure man yeah yep. okay yeah i just want to get a little more more detail on that actually maybe one other thing with that too is if a lot of you, you get caught with three guys low mm -hmm. unless because I don't think really coaches don't really teach that as a thing. Like you always kind of want to have one guy popping out a little bit, right? Yeah, well, like like systems are different. So yeah. that's this is the this is the only thing where right. like systems are different. Sometimes uh, if your team's big enough, fast enough, whatever it is, that sometimes they want three guys low because they're, they're yeah. good enough. So you just do that really extremely hard. Mm -hmm. But typically, you need to have one guy as an outlet for defensive pressure, right? Like, right. So and I think, but the other thing. Just to be, to reiterate what you're saying is you you want to still make sure you're an offensive threat because sometimes what I see too is like the and coaches coaches can do this too like they talk about having an F3 high but then it's almost like that guy is like being a third D on the point yeah you know and it's like you're not active like you're not involved yeah. when you're you're that high now you're like a purely in a defensive role which there might be a time and yeah. a place for well that, I, th I think it's a good game. it's good if your if your team is just not offensive at all. Or if, or, it's, or if it's just a point in the game where you want to have an extra exactly. guy or whatever, right? Yeah. So I know there, there's a time and a place for it, but yeah. don't have the mentality if you're F3 that it's all about defense no, no, necessarily. No. Like you no, still, no. you still, if your coach is saying we need to have that guy high, you got to be high. That doesn't mean just go high and just stand there. Yeah. Well, the, you know? the other thing is that, you know, I teach this to kids all the time is when, like, let's take away the defensive offensive thing right now. But when you're shooting pucks, like if you just see in practice, even when guys come in and shoot pucks, you're, Pucks, you you don't want to shoot pucks really tight to the net necessarily, because the tighter you get, the less the less room you have and stuff, right? So as there's more pressure on you, if you're if you, the, the closer you get to net, like if you're uh, deeper in the zone, well then obviously there's more guys there. And if you like say you shoot and it goes off a shin pad or it hits a goalie and it bounces out, if you're too deep, then if that's behind you, now you're just simply back checking. So yeah. that's another reason why you want to be a little bit higher, so that you can make more plays and if there's a, a screw up you're good defensively yeah. you're not back checking you're still above the box so yeah that's another sure. reason yeah.